hello guys alam this here again and um i'm attending the white pad cafe in lagos nigeria i mean i didn't plan to meet this milonia beside me you, you you won't believe he's an agricultural okay he doesn't like to be called that he's a farmer so i just met samson ugole who is a soilless farmer in nigeria and he has built technologies and I set up soilless farms in Nigeria. I was wowed by his presentation and I said I was going to just interview him here today. So thank you for agreeing to this short interview and very for urgent interview for that matter. Sam Samson, um, it's nice to meet you. So I am hearing of soilless farm farming for the first time today. And I know you already said that you, won't, you don't answer people who ask you what soilless farm is all about. I know what it is about, but for the sake of young entrepreneurs, young people who want to go into farming and who do not, who are avoiding the f agriculture because of, you know, oil and cutlasses and all that. So, uh, it's basically grain plants without using soil. So, remove the soil element. Like we always tell people, plants do not need soil to grow. Once you understand the function of soil, all you need to do is eliminate it and bring something as a substitute that can play the function. So we know that the function of soil basically is to support the plant, to allow for aeration, and to retain water. So if we can find a way to do these same things for the plant, definitely the plant would grow. So if, for example, like I always use this simple example, in your houses, when you buy vegetables normally, what you do is, you put your vegetable inside water if you don't have fridge mm -hmm. and you expect the vegetable to remain fresh and yes the vegetable remains fresh yes. now if you leave the vegetable for very long inside the water it will start bringing out roots yeah. if you needed the plants to keep growing all you needed to do was to apply fertilizer to the water okay. and the plant continues to grow so what you have been able to do is to grow your plant without soil mm -hmm. for the sake of naming ceremony we call it hydroponics <laughs> okay so it's a very simple thing it's not like it's not as complex as it might sound it's just removing the soil why are we removing the soil element you realize when you plant depending on soil mm -hmm. it means you have to plant seasonally okay. and like we tell people food production cannot be seasonal because hunger is not seasonal <laughs> two when you plant seasonally it means the prices of food will continue to fluctuate depending on the season mm -hmm. But if you can grow your crop not depending on season, it means the cheapest a crop can be can become the standard throughout the year. Okay. Thirdly, you realize with soilless farming, you can actually bring the farm to the cities. Yeah. So right now we cannot have farms that produce things like perishable food like your vegetables, such that you know I can go to my next door neighbor and buy lettuce, go to the other person's house and buy parsley. Mm -hmm. With these, the farmers in the rural areas can focus on non-perishable foods then in addition you realize your soilless farm what you did not plant cannot grow yeah. so you don't have to worry about things like herbicides mm -hmm. no insecticides and all of these other sites that you put on the plant that increases the contamination level and when you realize the fact that as local farmers we do not tend to follow the right agricultural practice so you see a weed you decide to keep spraying your herbicide until the weeds are dead mm -hmm. And this is not healthy for whomever is consuming. Okay, so thank you. Um, you also said during your session, that means I can actually start soilless farming from my, anyway, from my compound. Yes, you don't need so much space. Even if what you have is just a space enough for one meter by one meter, mm -hmm. that is enough to start. With soilless farm, you can grow vertically, which means you can do multiple layers. Mm -hmm. So if I have a small one by one meter space, but I decide to do five layers, my one by one meter space is now equivalent to one to five meter. So you can start anywhere. Once you have a little space, optimize your space. It's not like a, it's not rocket science. You can start with even the simple. You can use your mop bucket. Okay. Your mop bucket is a simple system enough for you to start how to learn how to grow and start. Okay, so you just talked about starting, you know, with what you have. How about the financial implications? Is it? No, really with as little as 5,000 naira, you okay. can start. 
So with as little as 5,000 naira, I can actually be a farmer. Yes, you can be a farmer. The most important thing is you can actually grow the basic crops you want to take. For instance, I was telling somebody, right now tomatoes is expensive in the market. Again. I have not bought tomatoes for the past two, year, sorry, two months, not yet, two months. Okay. And still inside my fridge till date, I still have tomatoes I grew soilessly at my backyard. Okay. Fortunately, I did not plan to grow the tomatoes to store. Okay. I actually used, I, I think I did a training sometimes in April. Okay. And I planted the tomatoes as part of the training okay. at my backyard. It was an online class. Okay. And now that the training is done, the tomatoes are still there and I'm harvesting. Okay. The neighbors around me, they are... I didn't know they were taking the tomatoes, but I always knew they were saying thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Until one day I realized, okay, these tomatoes are going faster okay, than they maybe are. Maybe I'll, I'll be your new neighbor. So no, I we don't take, need new neighbors anymore. <laughs> I can take tomatoes. So you also talked about um, developing products, technologies. How has technology um, impacted your soilless farming or is it just Look, you coming up with the ideas as technology being of any use yes, to you? Agriculture generally technology plays a, a crucial role. Okay. I mean you realize right now agriculture in the western world has moved way far far beyond holes and cutlasses. They have moved even away from mechanized farming to automated farming. Unfortunately in Nigeria we are still in that era where you are looking for holes and cutlass mm -hmm. and those ones that are a bit more successful I tell you they are looking for tractors yeah. meanwhile in developed countries you have farms be controlled by robots okay doing all of these activities now people say how can i bring in youth if you want a youth to pick up agriculture give them the modern tools nobody would say no to a farm controlled by remote controls oh, they would happily say oh i farm. like this kind of farm nobody would say no to a farm i can wear you can wear your suits too but the stigma around farm where you know if I go to the farm and I'm coming back, I'm dirty, I'm stinky, I'm smelly, that is one issue. On the flip side, you want to be able to interact with your plants. What is the joy of a staff in any company? Your ability to interact with your work. If you're an accountant, the joy you get is you understand the figures, the figures understand you. You are able to use whatever softwares are available to predict what should happen next. In agriculture, these same things are available, but people do not know that you can actually get test messages from your plants telling you how they are doing part time. You are able to get emails from your plant telling you, oh, the water level of the soil or of the soilless is too low. The humidity is not okay. The temperature is not. People forget that plants are living things. We have um, farms like that in Nigeria. Yes, Remote now we control. Farms. Yes, we do. Wow. Yes, we do. You see, people forget the fact that plants are living things. Mm -hmm. And as a living thing, there is a way they want to be treated. You don't just say, oh, it's a plant. I mean, a typical Nigerian, when you have a small garden in your house, the typical way you water your garden is you have finished washing clothes, go and pour the water. Mm -hmm. But it is wrong. People do not know that the kind of water that you actually meant to give to plants is actually cleaner than the kind of water we drink. Wow. There is something called electrical conductivity. The EC for the water we drink is 50. But the EC for water for plant is 10, which is way cleaner than what you are drinking. Now, people don't also know that the kind of water you use for your plant will determine the flavor, amount, which in effect determines the taste of your plant. So you want your vegetables to be as sweet as the one you get in your top stores, yet you are using your bedroom water to water the plant. They cannot be the same. And these plants generally are always trying to speak to you. You okay? At least every okay. Using technology does not have to be as complex as even the complex technology. It's as simple as you are a soil farmer, but you've never checked the pH of your soil to know the pH of the soil. You don't even know the nutritional component of the soil you want to start with, but you just know once I start growing, I'm going to apply fertilizer. How did you determine the kind of fertilizer you want to apply? What if the fertilizer you are applying, those specific nutrients are already too much in the soil? You don't know. So you realize there are technologies that exist that will tell you this is what is available. That a soil is fertile does not mean it is fertile for the crop you want to grow. Hmm. These are like, take for instance, you, your soil can be fertile to grow cassava, but it's not fertile to grow vegetable. Or fertile to grow leafy vegetable, but not fertile to grow fruity vegetables. So, you want to grow, for example, tomatoes, but what you have is a place that is highly rich in nitrogen. The nitrogen is going to give you good foliage, so you are going to have tomatoes that is giving you good leaves, but foliage does not mean fruity. 
So you now start wondering, you know, why are my plants not fruiting? Because what you have available and the fertilizer you are supplying is meant for foliage. Wow. I think I've learned enough to actually want to be to be a professional farmer right now. So mm -hmm. for someone like me, who does not want to be a soilless farmer? Who doesn't want to till yes, yes. who doesn't want to till the ground or plow or do all those things I was taught in my agricultural class in secondary school? How do I get involved in farming? Like I'm a digital yeah. strategist there and there are other people who are other things, yeah. maybe lawyers who want to be involved in farming. I hear you talk about value chain. How can we be involved in the value chain or how can we just be involved with farming? Yeah, you said we shouldn't think about making money. Yeah. But I mean the end product about, of First is about when you create value. Okay. Money would come. Yeah. Nobody would pay you money because they like you. Sure. They pay you money continuously. They become a customer because they are getting value. Sure. Now, it is called a value chain, meaning everybody has something they are adding. The first question you should ask yourself is, how many farmers do you know? Okay, I know you now. You know me now. So, before you got to know me, you have been eating. How did the food get to you? There is a value chain that food took. Mm -hmm. The farmer on the farm, he did not produce everything he is using on the farm. That is a value. So you can decide to say, okay, my own job is to be supplying the things the farmers need. Okay. You are at the back end, but you only get to be known by the farmer. Mm -hmm. Or you can decide, oh, my own job is to connect the farmers to the market. Mm -hmm. Or connect the farmers to the processors. Or be a processor. You have nothing to do with the farm, but you are processing things. I mean, at the back end, you can see fish. Okay. Somebody else can decide and say, you be the owner of the fish. fish. But my own job is, to be processing these fish and making them dry. Somebody else can decide and say, oh, my own job is you process the fish and all. I will create a better packaging. Mm -hmm. I mean, today this is inside Lila. Somebody else can say, let's not pack it in Lila. Let's look for one fine carton and call it a better name. Somebody mm -hmm. said the difference between do not and pop pop is one went this packaging, one went to school, one did it. So you could decide to come into it as packaging. That is on one aspect. Again, you might even be, oh, you are a lawyer. Yeah. All of these things that people do requires contracts. Yeah. You can come in and decide and say, oh, I want to become an agricultural-based lawyer, understand what are the nitty-gritties these people need to work against to ensure that oh, what they are signing does not work against them. You are in the value chain. You could even decide and say, oh, in my own case, I just want to be like what you are doing. Be the platform for farmers. Or be the platform that connects farmers and the markets. Or you have, well, what you for example, we know there was a time people needed cashew so much abroad. Yeah. Whatever it is farmers produce in Nigeria, our wastage is very high. Why? Because there is no direct link between the producer and the guys that need it. What if you are the link between producers and consumers? By consumer, it doesn't have to be the guy eating it the at end end. End It could be the industry that needs this thing in large quantity. You could also even be an extension worker to the farmers, telling the farmers how to do things better, and they pay you for your knowledge. So you are not really the owner of the farm, but they come to meet you as the guy that tells them, oh, this is not how to apply this fertilizer. You could open a test lab to help them test the quality of their produce so that it can easily meet the NAVDAC number for export. You can be open a test lab to help them test their soil. So there is a whole lot you can do in the value chain. Then you can decide to go a little bit out of Africa and become, when we say logistics, system, I'm talking about the transport company. Right now, I know Dan Tata Company is trying to open a, a whole chain line on that um, stream such that we are going to have cooling vans for just agri produce. So, that, so imagine if you have a cooling van that you know this thing moves all the way from Benue to Lagos once in a week. How many farmers will connect to your van? Because they know that if we can give them to you, they are going to remain fresh until they get to the market. So there is a whole lot. We can actually have a conga that is just made for agricultural okay, produce. We are build that. <laughs> so there is a whole lot. Everybody, irrespective of what you are studying or what you're doing, you can actually play in the agricultural value chain. Or you can even have the money and invest the money in a farmer so you don't have to do it all by At all. yourself just invest your money in the farmer that you know he knows what he is doing and the farmer makes profit and you share from his dividends 
Wow, thank you so much, Samson, thank for taking our much. time, you know, to, to do this. Thank and I'm sure I'm, I'm, I've really been inspired. I mean, I can be involved. That means I just have to crack my brain on what the, the, the level of value chain that I have to be involved with. Thank you so much. And do, do you mind telling us about your organization? Do you train people for free or do you consult if anyone wants to learn about soilless, soilless farming and all that you do? and also want to be part of it, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, you can go to our website, psmutrack.com. Okay, so you see the, screen, the, the, the web, the link on your yes. screen below? psmutrack.com. Uh, do we train? Yes, we do. We have both paid and free training, depending okay. on uh, what the training is. Like, we have some specific trainings, like on women's, they usually have trainings for women's, day, okay. things like that. So on such days, they are free. Okay. Basically, as a way to empower women. But then we also have paid training. Most of our paid trainings are online training and practical training. By practical training, it means you come live on our farm facility such that you can be there for a week or two weeks. So your payment takes care of you. We're going to give you free accommodation, free feeding while you are there. So the payment covers all of that. Then, of course, consultancy years would, if you want to set up your farm, we'll tell you what to do guide you on how to do it and you have your fun money thank you samson thank you very and much and i'm sure that the next time i'll be meeting you of course i'm not going to i'm going to keep in touch with you and next time i'm going to be meeting i'm going to be an agro premier right Definitely. all right guys see you later